Welcome back, folks. Take a look over the screen right here. We have the Tiger 4X report by Teddy Kekstad. Of course, he goes through uh, every Monday uh, currency pairings. I think it is a fantastic. But he also talks about the dollar, crude oil, and kind of whatever else he's looking at. Uh, it's pretty interesting, uh, to say the least. You look here every morning, go through DXY, Euro USD, Great British Pound, and then uh, the USD. Anyways, this is a fantastic newsletter, and I enjoy looking through it every Monday. We are joined by Teddy Kekstat. Teddy, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Jacob. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so what are we looking at? I was taking a look at the newsletter on Monday. You're looking at the DXY. You're looking at crude oil, and I, I actually really like your analysis, and I, I kind of agree with it. I'm, I'm curious what you want to talk about today, and if you can give me insight into what you're looking at, at least with DXY, uh, crude oil, and some of the uh, currency pairings. Sure. Well, I think that the key thing to talk about today is the CPI number, Absolutely. which is helping to totally influence the currencies, the interest rates right now. And uh, oil is definitely something that's influencing CPI. You know, I yes. mean, uh, oil has been obviously trending higher for over, you know, now for a month, you know, basically. And we hit some very key levels, you know, and we already took out some nice levels already three weeks ago. And now that sustainability is probably going to be influencing like CPI for the next one to two months, I would think at least. And that's if oil just stays where it's at or right. even pulls back a little bit, you know, and if it goes higher, well, then I think the trend will definitely continue into the summer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, over a year ago, right before the Fed started, you know, stopping their interest rate hiking, I said, you know, the, the, the big economic numbers now are like they used to be years ago. They are very, very important because they're the the. the true numbers that we can guide ourselves by when it comes to the major markets, you know, and especially with inflation, which we know is a big deal. You know, I mean, remember back in the fall, the, the, the media and all the pundits and all the geniuses were saying that we were, they were going to start cutting rates maybe right. by the end of the year or by now already, they would have done at least a quarter point. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that inflation and, you know, the average person on the street, that they can, they don't need to look at the TV to know that inflation's not going away. And it has, it may not be as you know, parabolic as it was a year and a half ago, um, that is for sure, you know, but, you know, we wouldn't be able to sustain things doubling and tripling every, you know, six months either, you know. Right. So, I mean, like, the, the reality is these things are definitely influencing the dollar. We've had breakouts to the upside, the U.S. dollar yen today, um, you know, especially with the CPI. I had an upside breakout target of 153.20, and we're, you know, we're trading maybe a half a dollar away from that right now. <coughs> Excuse me, you know, and that's because of the sell-off in the in the uh, interest rate market today, which is all be cut reflective of CPI, you know, and inflation's not going away. We had unemployment that came out very strong last week. We all know that these are numbers that the Fed they're not going to cut rates with these numbers trending in these directions. Right. And if anything. I wouldn't doubt it if we continue to trend this way with the CPI and the PPI over the next two to three months, we may get another rate hike right. before we have a rate cut, you know, and, you know, I, I, it's not about me always being contrary. And this is just basic mathematics and mm -hmm. being commonsensical. You know, it's not an, it's not an opinion that I'm getting this off of. It's, there's no bias there. This is just fundamental data, the way that's trending. It's just like higher highs and higher lows is indicative of a bull trend in any market. This is the same difference, you know what I mean? Right. So, and, and as long as that continues, you know, I mean, like, I had a conversation with somebody from the UK, a hedge fund guy, the other day. And we were talking about, you know, when the Fed may or may not react. How is it? What's going to do with the BOE and things like that? And even with Japan, you know, I mean, yeah, they they did finally raise rates for the first time in 17 years. Do they like the yen trading where it's at? Absolutely not. But then they're also not obtuse to the fact that oil is driving this. These other factors are driving the interest rate markets globally. And are they going to try and take on that one big beast by just trying to, you know, raise rates? Right. That's not going to happen. You know, so is it good for them? Are they happy with where they're at? Absolutely not. But I think that you're going to see some some action by them potentially in the next couple of months. But this trend is pretty strong. I, I would say that if we have another one or two data set numbers, big economic numbers over the next couple of weeks that continue this trend, I mean, you can see the dollar index getting up to about 105, 106, even area, one, even 106 half over the next probably month and it definitely three weeks to five weeks you know as far as trending now is it going to be are we going to have sell-offs of course we are anything that looks to go in the direction that the pundits want it to be like deflationary or whatever mm -hmm. i think you're going to have exaggerated spikes you know but that means that the dollar isn't a buy dip 
pattern. Oil is in a buy dip pattern. You know, mm-hmm. I, I would be careful selling into new highs. I'd be careful buying into new highs, but I'd be I'd be very. I would be leaning right now is for the most part is that to look into the buy dip, look for nice buying opportunities for the trend, you know? Right. So, and, and I think that, that there's no real reason to think that unless the fed comes out and says like, wow, we've had this recent economic data changes everything, but what earth shattering thing is going to happen? I mean, is unemployment going to all of a sudden shoot up to 5%? <laughs> right. is, is oil going to all of a sudden drop to 40 bucks? Right. You know, I mean like, can it happen? Happen? Yeah, but you're looking f- so far reaching for things to happen to create the situation. You know, it's like if you want to know the outcome, if, if you know the outcome, you know the journey, you know. Right. So if we're looking for an outcome like that, what's the journey we would have to take? It's nonsensical. So look at the journey where we are on right now and you can pretty much know what kind of outcome we're at, you sure. know, for to some degree. And, and I think that's the way you got to look at it. You know, interest rates, you know, we, we've, set the, we've set the upper bar, band of how high pricing is going to get in the in the 30 year and the 10 year because we've already factored in at least a quarter point to almost a half a point of cuts with no cuts mm-hmm. you know so there's no way that the most we can maybe do is press the upper range in pricing a little bit more to factor in maybe the potential of a total of three cuts but then that's it because without them actually cutting you're going to the market's going to drive it back down. So right. you're in a sell rally forecast for interest rates, you're in a buy dip forecast for oil, the dollar, you know. I mean like the US dollar Canada, nice explosion to the upside. If you want to give me me to give you some numbers, I can give you some numbers. Um but you know, for the Tiger Forex report, I mean, I'm really happy with the way things are going, you know. We've been in a side we're in a range trade sideways market condition. So the swings that we have right now, you have to capitalize on and be nimble. Don't ex- have exacerbated expectations. You know, am I bullish to dollar? Yeah. Does that mean I want to just get long the dollar and hang on for the next couple of months? No, I want to chip away, you know, because that's the way it's going to be, that kind of a thing. You have to be nimble. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I want to talk with what you're saying, too, with, with crude oil, at least, right? You know, if okay. you, you know the end point, you know, you know the journey and all this kind of stuff. But you're right. I mean, I, I think we're continuing to see a kind of environment that is going to push oil higher. You have Saudi Arabia and OPEC in general cutting down production. You have the war with Ukraine and Russia, where Ukraine and Russia, respectively, are targeting each other's refineries. I think this is a massive problem. And then Mexico, as well, is going to start, I think they're reducing it by 33%, the amount of oil that they're um, exporting. So all of this together, and this is you know, what I say when I come on and I, and I look at what crude oil is doing, I mean, th- this is going to keep inflation, and I understand it's part of the volatile CPI, but, but still, this, this plays in to what the Fed's going to do, whether they lower interest rates, increase them, or keep them stable. And I so, concur 100%. Yeah, I just, I, whatever, you, I, I think your analysis is, is awesome. And uh, I enjoyed Thank reading you, the report Monday. Thank you so much, Teddy. All right, take care. Take care now, right? Guys, again, that was Teddy Kex out of the Tiger 4X report. Come over here, subscribe. If you're a first time subscriber, it's a 30 day money back guarantee. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.